I promise you that if you do any or all of the five things that I talked about in this video, your credit score will increase rapidly. Don't believe me? See for yourself. The first thing you're gonna to need to do to increase your credit score rapidly is actually gonna to be to understand your credit report and where it's lacking. And before we even get to that step, we're gonna to need to understand what a credit score is. So to break it down to its simplest form, a credit score basically just tells lenders how credit worthy you are. So basically the higher the credit score you have, the more trustworthy a bank sees you as, and if that's the case, then they're gonna to tend to give you more money in the form of credit. So now what is a credit score actually composed of? There are five main factors for this. The first and the biggest category is gonna be on-time payments, which makes up 35% of your credit score. And basically the easiest way to conceptualize this category is to think about, for example, that you have a credit card that you've had for two years. That's 24 months of on-time payments that you could have made. Now, how many of those did you actually make? That would be your on-time payment percentage. So basically in order to maximize this category, we're gonna to wanna to make no late payments and always make our payments in full on time every single month. Second biggest category is gonna be credit utilization, which makes up 30% of your credit score. And the easiest way to think about credit utilization is basically the amount of money that you actually use within your given credit line. So for example, say you have a credit card with $10,000 worth of credit line and you spend $3,000 worth of that, that's gonna be a 30% credit utilization. Now, ideally for this category, we're gonna wanna keep that below 10% and I usually try to keep mine at about one to 2%. The third biggest category is gonna be age of credit, which makes up 15% of your score. And this category is basically calculated by just the average age of all of your different credit accounts. And ideally you're gonna want this to be as long as it can be, but of course, if you're getting new cards every once in a while, you're gonna be having a lower age of accounts. But the goal here is really just to get that as high as possible while still getting the cards that you wanna get. And the fourth category that makes up 10% of your credit score is gonna be the types of credit. And basically all this means is that the bank likes to see that you have multiple different lines of credit open. So that could be anything from a home loan, a car loan, your credit cards, student loans, anything like that. So technically the more you have, the better. But at the same time, I wouldn't recommend going and getting loans just because you want more types of credit. Because if you can't make those payments and you're getting loans just to get them, that's not gonna help your credit in the end. So of course, only apply for loans when you actually need them and don't go overboard with this. The fifth and final category that also makes up 10% of your credit score is gonna be the hard inquiries. So basically most times whenever you go to apply for a loan, the credit lenders are gonna be wanting to actually do a hard check on your credit report to make sure that you are trustworthy. And these come in the form of hard inquiries, which stay on your account for two years. So on the credit lender side of things, they're gonna want this number to be as low as possible, just so that they know that you're gonna be able to make the payments to them every month and that you don't have too many others that are gonna burden you down. On the side of credit cards though, for example, they don't wanna see it be a very high number because then it sounds like you are trying to apply for a bunch of different credit cards at once, you get a high line of credit and then flee the country or something like that. So you wanna keep this as low as possible, but at the same time, this isn't something you should be worrying about heavily. So now that you kinda of know what a credit score is and what they're composed of and also why they're important, what you can do now is actually go in and try to understand your credit report. So to do this, I would go to creditkarma.com or get the app for that or just any other similar site that will give you your credit report. That way you can actually review your credit report and see where you're lacking. So for example, if you go ahead and download the Credit Karma app, you can click on one of the reports in the top of the screen, whichever one you wanna choose. And then once you're there, you can scroll down to see the main factors that affect your credit score, which is all that we just talked about. Not only can you see these factors, but it also tells you one, how much of an impact they have on your credit score, but also where you're lacking. So for me personally, you can see that I have a low credit age and that's one because I only just recently started getting credit cards a couple of years ago, but also because I've been applying for multiple cards within that couple of years. So that's gonna bring my average age of accounts down. In addition to that, I do have a small number of total accounts, which is not what they exactly wanna see. And again, it's important to note that your credit report is gonna be completely personal to you. So you're gonna have other categories that you may need to work on. So make sure you pay attention to these details. So then you can go ahead and attack those areas that are weak right now. So now at this point, we know what we need to focus on. And for the sake of this video, I'm gonna consider just the credit utilization and the on-time payments categories. since those are the two highest impact categories for your credit score. And we're gonna see how we can optimize those because in optimizing these, we have the greatest chance of increasing our credit score rapidly and also dramatically. So now moving on to number two, this doesn't necessarily apply to everybody, but the first thing that you need to do, especially after you check your credit report and see where you're lacking, is pay off any credit card debt that you have. Now there are many different ways to accumulate credit card debt, but really all that means is that you have missed a payment in the past and because you missed that payment, you've been accruing interest on that outstanding balance. And you've been paying interest on that month over month until you pay off that balance in full. And also I wanna note that the interest rates on these credit cards are usually somewhere from like 15 to 25%, which is a really high interest rate to be paying month over month. So that's why it's so important to pay this off quickly. I do also wanna point out, because a lot of people that watch my channel are in a younger demographic, that if you miss a payment in the younger part of your credit card journey, this is gonna hurt your score a lot more than if you were to miss a payment with a longer credit history. And to illustrate this, I can give you a quick example. So let's say that you have one credit card that you've had for a year, so that's 12 on-time payments that you have the ability to make. But if you were to miss one of those payments, that would bring your on-time payments to a 11 out of 12 percentage, which is actually 91.67%. But on the other side of the coin, say you've had 
this card for a long period of time and you've had the ability to make 100 on time payments, if you were to only miss one of those, then your payments made percentage would be 99% in comparison to that 91.67%. So with that higher percentage, that means your score is going to be hurt less. But again, at the end of the day, we don't want to miss any payments. We don't want to pay any interest to the banks. And we always want to be paying our cars off in full every single month. Now, I know right whenever I said this point, people were probably sitting there like, okay, well, yes, of course, I'd love to pay off my credit card debt, but I don't have the money for that. So how do I do this? And the first thing that I can think of that has actually helped me in the past when it comes to paying off my tuition bills, for example, is to actually borrow money from a family member or a friend if they are actually willing to lend that to you. In doing this, you'd be able to pay off your full credit card balance in full right away. So that way you don't accrue any more interest on the account. And you can end up paying your family member or your friend who lended you the money back incrementally without paying them a ton of interest. Now, of course, not everybody has a person like this in their family or close group of friends that would do this for you. But at the end of the day, if there's any way to borrow money from a family or friend, it's much better than paying interest to the bank. Also, in paying this debt off as soon as you can, you're going to be allowing that bad credit history to fall off your credit report faster. Because for example, if you have a late payment or a missed payment on your account, that will stay on your account for up to seven years. So if you can get that clock rolling as soon as possible, then you won't have that bad credit history for quite as long. This would especially apply if you're looking to buy a house in the next seven years, for example, like me. So of course, I'd like to pay off that debt as soon as possible in order to get that off my credit report before I apply for that loan. Now, there are many different practical ways that you can pay off your debt quickly. For example, there's like the snowball or the avalanche method of paying off your debt. And I would also look into apps like Tally, which I would assume you've seen some ads on before, but I've heard that they're really able to help people out in paying off their credit card debt quickly. And no, this isn't sponsored by them. I don't have any sponsorships on this channel just yet, but this would be something to look into. And I would also just do a lot more research on YouTube or reading online just to see the quickest methods that you can actually pay off your credit card debt, whichever best suits your lifestyle. Now for point number three, let's assume that you've already paid off all your credit card debt and you actually understand what your credit report looks like, but you still have a low credit score, say under 700, what you can do is actually apply to become an authorized user on a family or friend's account. And in doing this, you would actually boost your credit card age as well as the on-time payment history. Now, this is a great thing to do with somebody that you trust and someone who trusts you because once they add you to their credit card account as an authorized user, you basically assume their credit card history, which would of course increase your credit score in turn. And the reason for that is of course, because as we talked about earlier, your on-time payments makes up 35% of your credit score. And say this person that you're becoming an authorized user for has had this card for five years. If you can assume someone's credit history of five years that has no late payments or anything like that, your credit score is going to go up. However, something that's really important to note here is that if you are trying to become an authorized user for somebody who is not very responsible with their credit cards, this could really hurt your score in turn. So imagine that they have some kind of derogatory remark or they have some late payments that they haven't paid off. If you become an authorized user on that card, then you're going to assume those bad things as well. You don't just get the good, unfortunately. And also you're going to need to make sure that you are going to be responsible with the card that they give you, because if you are not, then you can actually hurt their credit score really bad. So this is also just a good practice to actually make your on-time payments and keep that credit utilization low and practice everything that we've talked about in this video, but in a way that will actually increase your score as well as theirs. Now, the general rule of thumb that I've heard on this topic is to basically get somebody that has at least three to five years of credit history on that card. But of course, at the end of the day, if they have any more credit history than you, then that's going to boost your score. So it doesn't necessarily matter how many years they've had that card, but you want it to be at least like three to five years. And of course, you don't want them to have any late payments on this card. So keep that in mind as well. I also have heard that some credit card bureaus or credit card companies will not actually assume those previous payments as yours. And they will kind of assume that once you're added as an authorized user, that is a brand new card for you and that it starts to count everything after that point, but not anything before. So you may want to do some research as to what companies will do that because you obviously don't want to be getting added as an authorized user if you could go ahead and get your own card anyways. But of course, this is a really good thing to do. One, if you're young in your credit card journey and you haven't actually gotten enough payment history, so your score is low because of that. But also if you don't even have a credit card yet and you want to get added early to start building that credit history, this is another reason that this is such an important thing to do. So now moving on to number four, the next simple thing that you can do to increase your credit score quickly is to actually pay off your balances on your cards in order to decrease your credit utilization if it's high right now. Now the general rule of thumb for this is that you want to keep your credit utilization under 10%. And ideally, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I like to keep mine at about one to 2%. And keeping your credit utilization at one to 2%, this shows the credit bureaus that you are actually using your cards, but that you're actually using them responsibly and able to pay them off every single month. Now, this is a really important tip that I've learned in the recent past in order to actually decrease your utilization, even if you're making a really big purchase or something like that. Basically, to decrease your utilization in the short term, you can actually go in and make early payments to your credit cards right after you make that big purchase so that you can actually decrease that utilization before it is reported to the credit bureaus. And if you were to look at one of your credit card statements, you would see a bunch of different dates on there. But basically what you need to know is that in order to make this tip work, you have to actually pay off your credit card balances before the statement close date. Because once that statement close date hits, that is when the credit card companies will report to the credit bureaus. So any statement balance at that statement close date will be reported to the credit bureaus. So you don't want this number to be super high. Now, this is something that I use a lot whenever I'm trying to hit welcome bonus spend, because 
for example, there are some cards that you have to spend $4,000 within three months. So if I wanna make a $4,000 purchase, like my tuition, for example, I put it all on my credit card at once, I don't want that $4,000 reporting to the credit bureaus as my statement balance. Especially if I had a credit limit of say $10,000, that's 40% credit utilization, which is not good. So what I've done in the past is right after I make that purchase and the charge actually settles in my account, I'll go in and I'll make a early payment on my card to pay off as much as it takes to get my utilization down to one to two percent. And in doing so, whenever that statement date comes, what gets reported to the credit bureau is not the $4,000, but it would be the remaining balance on my account that gets me to that one to two percent credit utilization. Another thing that people say in the credit card community that is very misunderstood is that you want to carry a balance on your card from month to month. Now, this is not true. Do not carry a balance over month to month. If you're to do this, you're going to be paying interest on your credit card, and that is not a good thing. And this goes even if you're just making the minimum payment. The minimum payment tells the credit card companies that yes, you did make a payment on this date, but that doesn't stop you from accruing interest. The only way to not accrue interest is to pay at least the statement balance off every month. So if you have the ability to set up auto pay and you know you're gonna be able to make your payments every month, set your card up on auto pay to pay the statement balance at or before your closing date. Then you'll never have to worry about having a late payment and you always have that card being paid off automatically to where you never even have to think about it. Now, if you can't make the full statement balance, at least pay the minimum payment. But I do wanna warn you that you are gonna be accruing interest even if you make that minimum payment. So try to pay off as much as you can every single month. And ideally you wanna pay off the statement balance. I just wanna get that clear because this is something that people talk about and it is not healthy to ever pay interest on your credit card accounts. Now for the fifth and final tip that I have for y'all to increase your credit score rapidly is actually gonna be a little bit controversial and that's gonna to be to go ahead and get a new credit card. And yes, I know for you enthusiasts out there who understand how the credit card game works, once you apply for a new card, your score is gonna drop temporarily about five points. But within a month or so, if you use your card responsibly and keep paying it off like you're supposed to, your credit score will increase past that five point drop and even higher. And this is something we'll talk about later in the video. But obviously this point is not for everybody. If you do have a problem with overspending and this is something that you struggle with, I would not recommend getting a new credit card because obviously if you now have more of a credit limit, you have more ability to go overspend. And if that's the case, then you're gonna be paying more interest over time, which is just not a good thing. But if you do actually use your card responsibly and you pay it off in full every month, then getting a new credit card can actually be extremely helpful. Now, there are a ton of different ways to get your credit limit increased on your cards that you currently own, but if you get a new card, that new credit limit that comes with that card is gonna be added to your grand total of credit limit over all of your accounts. So this is much more efficient in getting a higher credit limit rather than trying to wait for the bank to do it for you or requesting a credit limit on a card that you already use. So as y'all can tell, I do like examples, but to break this down in a simple way, let's say that you have a credit limit currently of $1,000 and you spend about $500 a month on this card. Now, obviously, if you do 500 over 1,000 times 100, percent that's going to give you a 50 percent credit utilization which is not ideal but let's go ahead and say that you got a brand new card with a two thousand dollar credit limit that increases your total credit limit on your accounts to three thousand dollars and let's say that you don't increase your spending because you have a new credit card that means that you'd still be spending five hundred dollars a month but now with three thousand dollars worth of credit limit now your credit utilization percentage would be 16.67 percent which is much better than 50 percent now obviously we still want to get that credit utilization lower than 16.67 percent and you can actually use the tip that i just talked about earlier to go ahead and pay off your card early to decrease that credit utilization to one to two percent. Now, other than increasing your credit limit, there's also, of course, going to be a ton of other benefits when it comes to, for example, getting a welcome bonus. And basically all welcome bonuses do is give you free money for getting a brand new card with them and spending as you normally would. Of course, that is as long as you spend as you normally would to get the welcome bonuses. But if you get a brand new card and you're not going to be spending the $4,000 in three months like you're supposed to, and you go ahead and make a $4,000 purchase just because you need to hit the minimum spend on that credit card welcome bonus, then obviously this is going to actually hurt you in the long run. And that's going to wipe out all of the benefits of getting that welcome bonus. But for example, a card that I have that actually has a very high welcome offer right now would be the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Now, whenever I got this card, it was a 60,000 point welcome offer. Right now it's at 80,000 points. So if you're looking to get this card, I would definitely take advantage of it because this offer does expire May 31st, I've heard. So this is something important to jump on quickly. Now, I do have a link below this video if you want to apply for this card, but obviously only apply for this card if you were already planning on doing so. But let's say that you apply for the card and get the 80,000 point welcome offer after spending like you normally would in that first three months. If you were to redeem those points through the Chase travel portal, you'd be getting 1.25 cents per point when redeeming, meaning you get at least $1,000 worth of free travel when getting this welcome bonus. So that's a pretty cool benefit of getting a new card. But when it comes to increasing your credit score, the most important things with getting a new card is it's going to one, increase your credit limit really quickly. It's also going to add to the number of payments that you can make every single month since it's a brand new card. So instead of having one card that you could pay off 12 times a year, you now have two cards that you can pay off 24 times a year. And although yes, it will knock your score very temporarily and will also decrease the average age of your account, 
as long as you actually want to get new cards and this is something that you're looking for, that overall increase in your credit limit, which falls into the credit utilization category of your credit score, which makes up 30% of your score, will far outweigh the temporary hits to your credit score because at the end of the day, those hits only come in those 10% categories rather than this 30% category. So over time, getting new credit cards is really good for your credit score as long as you don't just get the credit cards to make big purchases that you aren't gonna be able to pay off. These five methods are some of the simplest and easiest ways to rapidly increase your credit score. If this video has inspired you to actually go ahead and take action and maybe get a new credit card, go ahead and click this video here to see how often you should be applying for credit cards in order to maximize your credit score, or go ahead and click here to see what's in my wallet right now as some of the best credit cards going into summer of 2022. And finally, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you're still watching at this point, please go ahead and give this video a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll catch you guys next time.